It's always a mindset. Driven mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. This is part three of this four-part podcast. Enjoy. So for this young guy who keeps thinking, you know, why mindset? Why not just get out there and make more money? Why not go get a better job? Why not do all that? Because a long-term strategy, if you don't get your mindset right, you're never going to get your money right. You will make money quick and you'll lose money if you do do it. Most people, they won't make more money. They will just keep plodding along and they'll make money, lose money, make money, lose money, make money, lose money. Because if you're at $80,000 a year and you have zero savings, you essentially lose $80,000 a year. Most people don't think about their lifestyle like that. So if your habit is $80,000 and at the end of the year, I still have zero, what happens when you get $150,000? Now, all the dipshit dumb motherfuckers out there go, yeah, but at $100,000, I'm going to do something different. No, you won't because you've got a habit of behavior that the more money you make, the more money you spend. I know this because if you're making $80,000 a year and have zero, there was probably a stage in your life where you were working a job previously where you made less and you still spent it all. If you did your apprenticeship, you might've been making, let's say $1,000 a week. So $52,000 a year. And you were making $52,000 a year. And I guarantee at the end of that year, you had zero. And so you went from $52,000 a year to $60,000 a year and you still had zero. Then after that year, you went to, $58,000 a year and you still had zero. Then you went to $65,000 a year and you still had zero. Then you go from 65 to let's say 75 and you're still at zero. And then you go from 75 to 80 and you're still at zero. Tell me that that's not a pattern. Yeah, but it's going to be different this time. No, it won't. It won't be. Why? Because you haven't changed your mindset. It's the mindset's the problem. It's just that most people who don't get it, don't get it, right? I didn't get it when I was young. I didn't get it. These days, I probably at least spend an hour every day working on my mindset which is why I live a great life and crush it and why I have amazing clients. I fucking love my life. I would not exchange it with anybody for no amount of money. I love my life. I love my life because I've got an amazing partner. I wake up in the morning and I'm enthusiastic about, you know, doing the stuff that I do. Like I love this stuff. Okay. It's because I love my life. I've built it that way, but I built it by changing my mindset first because I had a whole bunch of really bad patterns that I picked up from my mom, my dad, my grandparents, the kids at school, the school system, you know, my friends in my teenage years, in my adult years, all of that stuff. I've had to unwind all that stuff. So it's not about learning new shit sometimes. It's about unlearning all the crap that you've learned throughout your life. When you come from a low or lower middle class or even middle class, your patterns of behavior are bad, right? Bad financially. Because most people in that class will always stay in that class because their parents told them, the greatest investment that you ever make is a home. So the majority of Australians run around and they're like, gotta buy a house, gotta buy a house. Shit, I'm 22 and I don't have a house. I'm a fucking failure and I'm I'm not getting anywhere in life. And so they rush out and they buy a house. Do you know how dumb that is in like 99% of the world? I was talking to a person in my Dominate program the other day on the last week's Dominate coaching call. She's from the UK. Diane's probably listening to this right now. And I said, Diane, in the UK, do people talk about buying a house? And she said, no, nah, no one even cares. Because over there, renting is just normal. And that's what people do. So they don't think about buying a house. That's not what they're being convinced to do. So their culture is different. In Australia, it's like, if you don't own a home, you're never going to get ahead financially. So, and the government incentivizes it. But the only people who get rich from normally home ownership are banks, right? And the banking sector pay huge amounts of money to the government, both through their campaigns, through the the political parties, but also as well through taxation. So why wouldn't the government want to look after the banks? The other thing is that the more you get trapped in an employee mindset where you're always stuck working for somebody else, which you need to do when you start. But when you get stuck in that for a long period of time and you're bound financially and you can't do anything else, the government knows that you're going to pay tax your whole entire life. Now, the people who pay the most amount of tax are employees, right? Not personally, like I pay way more tax than any employee, right? But the thing is that my percentage of tax is a lot lower, but I pay more financially. Like a billion dollar company that pays 5% tax is going to pay more than an employee who's paying 30 or 35% tax or even 40, 45% tax, depending on the tax rate, like 49% or whatever. So the government needs more people to keep working because they get more taxation out of it. And so that's just what they do. So if they can convince you to buy a house when you're young, you're going to be trapped for the rest of your life paying that off and you're never going to be able to leave your job. So you're always going to be in that mindset. You know, it's a trap. Right, but that's what everybody does. If you go to most countries around the world, they don't give a shit about home ownership. Australia does. But if you go to the UK, 
your job title is important. So from the friends that I have over there, if you've got a high paying job and you've got a title, that means everything. That's way more important than owning a home, right? If you go to the US, it's the American dream. The American dream is building a great big grand lifestyle. In Australia, very few people think like that, right? Like, you know, a lot of people look at the US and they're like, wow, the US makes all this money. They're very driven, they're decisive. But it's because over there in the US, they're reinforced consistently on a daily basis. The US dream, the US dream, the US dream. The US dream is to come and create the big dream, the big goal, to have the big aspirations. So they think big over there. In Australia, people are like, oh, I want that lifestyle, but fuck, I've got to buy a house and then I've got to have kids, I've got to get married and I've got to have a white picket fence. They can't get the dream because they're, they're trapped by that shit. It's a different culture. So you have to unpack all of those cultural norms from our society in order to progress and move forward. That's why if you think that it's not a mindset, you're crazy. It's a mindset. Right, That's what it is. If you don't change your mind, you won't change your life. What I did was I stopped listening to most Australians. I started listening to a lot of people in the US where they're like, great American dream, great American dream. And so I just started creating my great dream. But it's now my Australian dream. Most Australians don't have supercars, live in a multi-million dollar house. They're able to travel anywhere. They don't have a business that they love, that they get up every day and they fucking love it. They don't have a client list that they really enjoy talking to and being around. I love clients. That's why I go out for lunch with them at events. I'm one of the only speakers on the planet who I will speak all morning at a live event. And then I say, right, who's going to lunch? I'll come with you. And I go and I hang out with everybody. And then I'll keep going. And then I'm like, right, I'm going to dinner. Who wants to come? And then I go and hang out with everybody because I love hanging out with my community. That's why I keep all the shit kickers and all the jerks out. I kick people out of my community because if they're idiots and they take advantage of people, they're out. You're gone. They're not the types of people I want to hang out with. But that's my community. That's the Driven Mofo community. So my point is, if you don't start unwiring a lot of these unconscious patterns that you've been brought up with, if you don't break the societal norms that you've got, if you don't break your way of thinking, very rarely will you get ahead financially. Even for me, I still work every day on my mindset because some of the clients that I work with who are in the rich list or who are extremely wealthy, you know, we're talking, you know, 50, 100, 150, you know, up to a billion dollar businesses, those people still think extremely different. Some of you, if you're listening to this, I know Matty Z, who owns South Adelaide Plumbing and Gas, who I know listens to this podcast, he's been one of my clients for two years now and he's got a great, great plumbing business and he's, he's starting to put runs on the board now, which is cool. It's taken two years for him to unwind his mindset and then start to build it up in a way where he thinks different. And, and you can see it in him, right? It's really cool. He's got different level of confidence and so on. And so now he's like, it's weird because for two years, he's been building his business, but his business growth hasn't been super financial. But what he's been doing is he's been unwinding all of his mindset and then building this new mindset. And really now he's at the start of his business growth. I can see it in him. He's like right at the bottom, ready to take off. And it's super exciting, but that's taken two years of unwinding a whole bunch of shit that he's been taught, rebuilding the way he thinks, rebuilding the way he thinks about business, about money, about staff, about marketing, about sales, about all that stuff. And so now he's right at the bottom ready to take off, but it's taken two years to do that. Most of you won't commit two years to do that because you want it now, but that's why you'll probably never be rich and never get ahead financially long-term. So for him, it's been mainly a mindset shift before he's seen it in his business, his business growth. Now his business hasn't been bad, but it's sort of gone up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit, up a bit, down a little bit. Why he's learning all of these skills and this knowledge. But the main thing is why his mindset's shifting. He was in an event. So Maddie, you can jump on online and, and let everyone know about this because you were in the room during this. And, and some of the other people who are listening to this were in the room. I was running a leadership course and there was one of my other clients in there, Ben. Ben is a big property developer. He develops, you know, 400, 600 allotment blocks. So we're talking like 400, 600 houses at a time. So we're not talking like little small subdivisions. We're talking like huge, 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 huge deals. And, and like there are bigger ones out there, but he's one of the big boys in town. But anyway, he's sitting in one of my events. And this is a leadership event that I run. I normally do it once a year. And you can only do it after you've done my Thrive Time event. Because if you're not operating right, you'll never be a good leader. There's a back door in my programs where it opens up other programs that the general public don't get access to. So he's at this leadership program. Matty was there, but but Ben's the guy in the room, the developer. And Ben puts up his hand. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. And I said, you know, I did my welcome in the morning. Said, how's everyone doing? And he's like, yeah, good. He goes, hey, mate, look, I know today's all on negotiation deal making. Can you run me through any deal making or negotiation strategies? 
So I run him through the basic deal-making framework that I've got. I run him through the framework. I teach him about some of the communication tools and the communication skills. Now, he's already got the mindset of making crazy amounts of money. Anyway, he said to everybody, look, I've got a meeting at 11 o'clock with an investor from overseas. So it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I go through talking about negotiation and deal making. He's already built his mindset around money. So he's fine with that. He walks out of the room. He goes into the room next door. So there was this empty room in the hotel in the area where all the events and shit are. So it's like stack full of chairs and tables and all that stuff. Anyway, he walks in there and goes to have his meeting with this investor. Anyway, about 20 minutes later, I walk out of the event room and I go into the bathroom just across the hallway. And the next second, Ben walks out of the room, right? And so I see him and I go, said, how'd you go? And he looks at me and he goes, I raised 11 mil, brother. Now, when he went into that meeting, he was only looking to raise $4 million. So he asked me the question with the mindset and the idea that he was going into an, a meeting with an investor to raise $4 million. A 20 minute conversation and he walks out of the room with $11 million. This is the speed that high level people operate at and the level that they operate at financially. If I said to most people, invest a small amount of money, it would take you six months. Like I have people that have been watching me for like four years or five years or even six years and are still sitting on the fence about doing Thrive Time. You're like, oh man, I'm still not sure. Like I just don't know that I'm ready for it. I'm not in the right headspace yet. This dude walks out, walks into a room 20 minutes later, walks out with $11 million. Now, brokies are worried about losing, you know, a small amount of money to do a program that they've been following the dude for like four or five years. That's the difference. So if you don't think that making money is a mindset, you're fucking crazy. It's a delusion. Because the investor goes, yeah, cool. This guy sounds legit. I like what he's got going on here. Done. I'll invest. Now, obviously, after that, they have to do their due diligence and, you know, go through some paperwork and all that stuff. But to do a commitment like that online, that quick in 20 minutes is huge, right? Most people will never do that. Most people can't even commit. Most of you can't even commit to what you want for dinner. Like it takes you longer than 20 minutes to try to figure out what you want for dinner. And that's the truth. So that's the speed that high level people operate at, right? And I see it happen time and time and time and time again. You know, I mentioned this on a podcast earlier. I dropped half a million dollars on a car and I spent less than a day on the phone to the guy. So I rang the guy up. I said, look, I'm keen to buy it. We did a little bit of negotiation. I said, yep, cool. I'll buy it. He goes, cool. Here's all the details. I said, leave it with me. I transferred some cash into his bank account. I hadn't even seen the car. It was interstate. I'd seen photos of the car and I was like, yeah, cool. I'll grab it. So I bought it and then just got it shipped across. But most of you, it takes longer to figure out where you want to go in like six months for a dinner, right? It's crazy. And that's the reason why making money is a mindset. The speed at which you move at depends on the amount of confidence you have within yourself and your ability to back up where you're at. So if I lost half a million dollars on a car, I would be pissed, but I know that I'd make it back. This guy here, they're playing a big game. So for him to lose $11 million, it would sting, but it wouldn't be the end of his world. It'd be like, yeah, you know what, I'll make it back. Whereas like a lot of you, if you lose like 50 bucks, you're pissed and you'll be pissed for months, right? And I see this happen sometimes with clients where sometimes a client, something happens, like they pay money and within 24 hours, my team hasn't unlocked the back end. And all of a sudden they're sending threatening messages. You guys are scammers. You're ripping. It's like, cool. There's a system. Obviously the system's broken. I'll make sure I'll check it out. Like, thanks for letting me know. No, nah, I don't want to work with you guys. If you're that emotionally volatile, when something small happens, imagine what happens when something big happens. Like you'll kill yourself. It's a mindset. Money is always a mindset game. So never forget that, guys. It's always mindset over money every time. Driven mofos, this is the end of part three of this four-part podcast. Remember to join me back here tomorrow for part number four. Most people waste their life, and I just don't want you to be one of them.